All right, so in this video, we're going to start with an example that's uh, really, really important um, for, for those of you that are moving on to calculus. Um, so we'll, we'll start it the same way. Um, when we need to find the domain, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll factor the denominator. Uh, so I'll take an x squared out, which would leave me with an x squared plus 1, which would be an x plus 1, x minus 1. So um, the domain of this function is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to 0, union 0 to 1, union 1 to positive infinity. So you can see we've excluded the values of a negative 1, 0, and 1, all of which would make our denominator 0. Now we're going to kind of break the mold here a little bit, and, and at this point, let's stop and reassess. Um, if you'll notice in that numerator, if I factor out a negative, I'm also going to be able to factor this into x plus 1 and x minus 1. Now, part of our problem was that we couldn't have a 1 and a negative 1 in our denominator, but we're actually able to now divide off those factors that caused us trouble. So now, we're actually going to graph y equals a negative 1 over x squared, but we still have to graph it under this domain. <clears throat> so we're going to graph this, and the parts that we were able to remove, those are actually going to be holes in the graph. So we're going to graph this thing uh, with holes at uh, x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Now, to find the y-coordinates, uh, I'm going to come back to this guy. If x is 1, I plug that in right here, and I find out that my y-value would be a negative 1. And similarly, if I plug the negative 1 in, I find out my y-value is also negative 1. So, again, if you're able to remove the problem, uh, you'll graph what you have left, but the parts that you remove will be the holes in the graph. All right, so now we're getting ready to continue graphing this guy. So into my second step now, I can identify the vertical asymptotes as x equals 0. Uh, so combining the vertical asymptote with the holes, we still are graphing under the, the original domain. Okay, uh, the third step we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 because that's where the, the, uh, the degree on bottom is bigger. So we have a, a case 2, I believe, is how I defined it as. <clears throat> the crossing check. Uh, let me come over here to do that. So the crossing check, I'll set the asymptote equal to the function. Uh, and you can clearly see that uh, that's not going to give us anything. The fourth step would be the intercepts. Uh, I've already checked the x-intercept. There's nothing there. Um, and I also know that I'm not going to have any y-intercept because that's also an asymptote. Uh, so we won't have any uh, intercepts. So I'll come over here, and I'm going to plot what I know. I know that I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, I also know um, by looking at the original function, or the one I have boxed in here in green, the one that we're actually graphing, that no matter what, my y values are always going to be less than zero. I know that because my denominator is always positive, my numerator is always negative, that uh, quotient gives me a negative number. So no matter what, again, I know that my graph has to be below the x-axis. Now, we still have to take into consideration the holes. Uh, so I'm going to come over here uh, at 1, negative 1, and at negative 1, 1. I'm going to erase, and I'm actually going to fill that in now with an open circle denoting the hole. So there's your negative 1 and your 1. And there's your graph. So again, if you can simplify after establishing the domain, uh, well, you should do so. And if something is removed, if the problem is removed, then we can classify it as a whole and not an asymptote.
uh, and then you would continue graphing what's left as you always would. All right, so the last thing we'll discuss in this video um, would be rational inequalities. Um, and the golden rule for rational inequalities is, as tempting as it might appear, don't ever cross multiply. Okay, don't ever cross multiply. So if we look at our example, if that was an equal sign right here, absolutely cross multiply. <clears throat> but it's not. It's an inequality symbol. And we have to remember <clears throat> that when you multiply an inequality by a positive number, the sign stays where it is. But if you multiply by a negative number, the sign would have to change. Well, if you look carefully at our example, if let's suppose x was 0. Uh, if x is 0, then all of a sudden when you multiply this to the other side, that sign has to flip-flop. But if x was 4, then when you multiply in either direction, the sign wouldn't have to change. So we don't really know what to do with the sign because we don't really know what x is. That's the point of the problem. So don't cross multiply. Instead, what you're going to want to do is get both terms on the same side. So I went ahead and I subtracted the x minus 1. I'm going to build up an LCD here. We've got an x plus 3 and an x plus 3, an x minus 1 over an x minus 1. So now when I clean this up, I'm going to get a 2x minus 2 minus x minus 3. Be really careful to distribute that negative in there. And then our LCD of x minus 1, x plus 3. And then bigger equals 0. Finally, x minus 5 over x minus 1 and x plus 3. Now, all semester long I've been preaching that inequalities come with questions. Not only did we, we um, avoid big mistakes by not cross-multiplying, um, but we've also now set ourselves up to answer the question, where is the graph above or on the x-axis? So that leads us to find these critical values again. So our critical values will be any number that zeroes out any factor in this inequality. So 5 would be a critical value, 1 would be a critical value, and negative 3 would be a critical value. So those are the numbers now that I would take, and I'd go ahead and I'd put on the number line. Negative 3, a 1, and a 5. So on the number line now, we'll go ahead and test some points. Uh, maybe I'll test a negative 4, a 0, a 2, and a 6. And I'm going to come over back into the, the factored, simplified, rational inequality. And so now we're just determining signs, pluses versus minus. If we take the 6, for example, if I put a 6 out of this guy, I'll get a plus, I'll get a plus, I'll get a plus. Pluses all around tell us that we're going to be positive from 5 to positive infinity. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the 2, for example, when we plug that in, back to the, the green box then um, inequality, uh, our 2 is going to give us a negative on top. It's going to give us a positive here. It's going to give us a positive here. A negative divided by a positive would be negative. Uh, so then I would go and try the 0. If I plug the 0 in, uh, you can do the same calculations and see that you'd end up with a positive quantity. If I plug the negative 4 in, a similar uh, exercise would give us the negative. So again, all we care about are pluses and minuses. Where is it above the x-axis? Where is it below? So for us, um, we're looking for it to be above or on the x-axis. So I'll come over here, and, and you can see that it's going to be anywhere the pluses are. Now when I put together my interval notation solution, I do need to be a little careful. Clearly I need to be between 3 and 1, and I also need to be between 5 and positive infinity. I know the positive infinity is going to have the open bracket on it because it's an infinity, uh, but I want to be a little careful with the negative 3, 1, and 5. Um, we can include the 5 because it's an or equal to inequality. But 
we cannot include the negative 3 and the 1. We can't include those, even though it's a greater or equal to 2. We can't include them because if you look carefully, the negative 3 would make your denominator 0, and the 1 would make the denominator 0. So we can't include, we have to keep the open brackets on there, even though we close it up on the 5. So for these rational inequalities, you got to remember from the beginning, do not cross multiply. And at the end, then, make sure your brackets are the correct ones based upon uh, your denominator, not wanting it to be 0.